Hello, I'm Steve Friedman with Rockstar Excel. Today I'm going to show you three quick and easy ways to compare data in spreadsheets. With these methods, you can take two versions of a spreadsheet with thousands of rows and find what's been added, removed, or changed between them in a few seconds. This is great if you have large data records of employees, vendors, customers, or pretty much anything. This was a request from one of my followers. I love getting requests, so please send me your questions. You can post a comment, use the form on the Rockstar Excel website, or email steve at rockstarexcel.com. Now, these methods assume that you're familiar with filters. If you aren't, I suggest you pause this video and watch my video on Filters, Excel's Easy Button, which I'll link to below. And I'll say that there are many different ways to compare data in Excel. I'm showing you what I think is the fastest, which makes it the best. But if you know of a better way to do this, please tell me. I'm always looking to learn. So here we have a simplified example of a teacher's roster. There's a March and April version and each one has a few records that are missing from the other. So what's the quickest way to find the records that are missing from each one? The way I do this is with the COUNTIF function. Now that may not be what the count, what COUNTIF is intended for, but it works. So let me show you how to do this. The first thing you want to do is find a unique identifier, something that's going to be different for each record. So here we have student ID numbers. So what you're going to do, first I'll label this column check, is you use a COUNTIF. So you, you do equals COUNTIF, and then you go over to the other spreadsheet and highlight the column with the ID number uh, for your range, and then you do comma and come back to the spreadsheet you're working on and select the ID number in the same row and close parentheses. So what this is doing is it's looking at the other spreadsheet and counting how many times this ID number shows up. And it shows up one time, which is what you want. But if it were missing from the spreadsheet, it would show up zero times. So you go ahead and fill down the formula and then you put a filter on this and then you filter out the ones and the zeros are the ones that are on this spreadsheet but are missing from the other one. Now, this only tells you what's on March and is missing from April. It doesn't tell you anything that isn't on the March spreadsheet but is on the April spreadsheet. So what you have to do is go over to the April spreadsheet and do the same thing. So you do make this check column and you do equals count if go back to the March spreadsheet and highlight the column with the ID number and comma, and go back here and select the ID number in the same row, close parentheses, fill it down by double clicking in the corner here, and then put a filter on it and filter out the ones. And now you've got the names or the records that are in April, but aren't on March. So this is a real quick way to find what is on one spreadsheet but not on another. Now, this only works if you have a unique identifier, something where you know is going to be different for every record. But what happens if you don't have a unique identifier? Well, that's still pretty easy to do. So here I have another example. It's almost the same spreadsheet, except they don't have the student ID number. And if you look at the names, there's two kids named Annette, there's two kids named Benjamin, there's two kids with the last name James. So there's nothing that's going to be unique in any record. But if you combine the first name and last name, then those two together are going to be unique. So he, what you do instead of using count if is you use count ifs with an S at the end. So you do equals count ifs, and the difference between count if and count ifs is that with count ifs, you're looking at multiple criteria. So here you have count ifs, open parentheses, and you go back to the March spreadsheet, go over to this tab, and then you select the first, the column with the first names and comma. You come back to April and select the name in this row, and then comma, go back to March, 
and select the column with the last names, then comma, and go back and select the name in this row, and then close parentheses. And again, what this is doing is it's looking and seeing, counting how many times over on this March spreadsheet there is someone, there is a record where the first name is Ada and the last name is Depp, and that happens one time. So you come back here and then you fill this down and you put a filter on it and then you filter out the ones and then you see the zeros here. And those are the people that are on April but are missing from March. And again, to find who's on March in, but missing from April, you would go over to the March spreadsheet and do the same thing here. Now, what if you aren't really concerned about what's been added and removed, but you want to find what's been changed? So here we've got a much more complicated spreadsheet where we've got all these grades entered for different uh, weeks. And you look over at the April spreadsheet, there's the same thing, but some of these numbers have been changed. So we want to find out where they've been changed. So the quickest way to do that is with the text join function. So first you do, let's just call this column text. So you do equals text join and you have to put a delimiter. I like to use a tilde just because, actually sorry, you have to put that in quotes just because it's something that isn't really used for anything else in Excel, so you're not going to confuse it for anything. And then a comma, and then you have to put false. I'm not going to go into why, but you just want to put false here. And then a comma, and then you want to highlight everything in the row that has data in it. So basically everything to the left of where you're putting your formula, and then close parentheses. So now we've got this cell, which looks like a total mess. It's not something that's easy to read, but that's fine because it's not meant to be read by a human, it's meant to be read by Excel. Then we go over to March and we do the same thing. So we've got this text column and we do equals text join, quote, tilde, quote, comma, false, comma, and then we highlight here and close parentheses. And actually we want to go ahead and fill this down. And I should have done that over on the April side. So fill this down. And now we put in our check column. And we're going to do the same thing we did back in the first example, only we're using this text column that we set up. So we do equals count if, and then we go over to the March spreadsheet and we highlight this text column and then comma, and we come back over to April and select the cell in the text column and then close parentheses and then fill that down. And here you only have to do it once if you know you have the same records and you're just trying to find changes. So then you go ahead and put your filter on and filter out the ones. And here you've got the zeros. So what this is doing is Excel is looking to find this exact text string. And this text string is taking every value in this record and combining them together. And because it can't find these, it means that something has changed. So if you go over to March and you look at Anne-Marie Pert here, Anne-Marie Pert is still here, but since Excel couldn't find the exact value here, that means something about Anne-Marie Pert's uh, record has changed. Uh, and that's what you were looking to find. Now, there are some automated methods to find exactly what has changed, 
but that is outside of the scope of this video. This was just about finding records that have changed at all. Anyway, that is three quick methods to find records that have changed in your data sets. I'm Steve Friedman with Rockstar Excel. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out our Excel tips blog uh, on our website. We've also got our Excel Made Easy class coming up next week, so you won't want to miss that. Or if you're watching this video after the registration deadline of March 30th, 2021, check out our website to see what other classes are coming up. We also do one-on-one -on -one consulting and done-for-you solutions. So once again, I'm Steve Friedman with Rockstar Excel, and be sure to send me any other questions you have of ways I can make Excel easy for you. Thank you very much.